Hey everyone, welcome to Dit Dot. My name is Amanda. If it's your first time here, well, welcome to my kitchen. I really like to focus on how to cook homemade healthy dinners and teach busy people how to get dinner on the table five to six times a week. If you're returning, thank you so much for your support and I hope you have hit that subscribe button. Something that I don't usually do is start out my videos asking people to subscribe, but I have an unreasonable goal. My channel is almost 10 months old and I was really, really dreaming big and hoping to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of this year. So if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do. I really would appreciate it. Tonight is gonna be one of those fun nights. I have an idea in my head and I know it's been done. I know there's blogs out there that do it, but it's so much more fun to like watch someone figure it out, right? So Instant Pot vegetable lasagna, here we go. Okay, so this dish is gonna go a lot faster if you do happen to have a food processor. If you don't, you can obviously hand chop all these vegetables, but having a food processor is just gonna make everything go a lot faster. So I just raided my refrigerator, dug through to see what kind of vegetables that I had that would I thought would go well in a lasagna. And like, especially if I saw some that might be kind of like on the outs and like, oh, like these mushrooms kind of just need to get used, right? I'm gonna give them a couple, give them a quick brushing off to make sure that there's no dirt on them. Mushrooms are like sponges, so you don't want to pour, put them under running water. Two of my goals when I'm cooking is to make healthy and fast and also, that means with as little dishes, dirty dishes as possible, because no one wants to be cleaning dishes. But that being said, I think things like the carrot need to go down the chute, but then the broccoli, I'm gonna have to use the, um, the other blade. So we'll, we'll figure this out, right? I'm gonna go ahead and, this is like a giant car carrot. Isn't that insane? So give it a quick rinse. I don't usually peel carrots unless it is, you know what? Ooh. Honestly, I'm actually changing this real quick. Okay, I'm not gonna shred it because I don't want shredded carrots. Pause, woo. <laughs> I am so glad I thought about that because the texture that I'm going for is actually a really like finely textured. Um, with chunks. I don't know if any of y'all have ever eaten Amy's frozen lasagna. I'm doing more vegetables that are even in her lasagna, but it's got this like interesting like texture that I love. So that's actually what I'm going for. So that being said, I don't want shredded carrot. I actually want chunks of carrot. So I'm going to put the blade in, not the shredder, and I'm going to just pre-cut up the vegetables that are gonna need to take the most processing time and put them in. So I'm gonna start with the carrot. I'm gonna pulse it a couple times, then we will add vegetables as we go. Okay, so I still want this to be fairly big chunks because I'm gonna keep processing with other vegetables. Oh wait, I don't think I have to open this because it's got the big feet hole. Okay, so with the broccoli, you can use it stem and pieces, everything, because it's just gonna add to that yummy texture that we're talking about. The ends of the stem tend to get dried off, so I'm gonna chunk that in my sink, and we'll give this a couple pulses. So it's easy to cook without a recipe when you learn methods of cooking. <laughs> um, sounds like the family is looking for our kitten. So in my last video, I introduced Echo, our adorable new kitten. He is 13 weeks old as of this video. And he is just a ball of delightful energy. <laughs> In goes a zucchini. Hold on, I got these chopped up pretty big. I'm probably making more vegetable here than I need. I tend to 
overdo the fillings of stuff. I'm only gonna use two. Well, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. We like a lot of vegetables. We like a lot of filling. Okay, now I'm not gonna use the ends of the asparagus because they will be remain tough. So I'm gonna put these in. I mean, two mushrooms doesn't even count. So we'll go ahead and put them all in. Why not? And then I've got several cloves of garlic and my thing's getting pretty full. I've got some parsley here. So I'm gonna throw that in and then we're gonna pulse this up until we've got a nice, fine, chunky mass of vegetables. Okay, I think I need to stir some stuff down. Let's see. I may have to empty this out into a bowl after all. I don't want to puree it, so I'm keeping an eye on that but otherwise it's looking good. I'm gonna go one more time and then I'm gonna just pull out any like big chunks that didn't go work in. Actually, I think that did it for me. I don't know, there's still this one stubborn mushroom that doesn't wanna even chunk up. Look at that. This guy is like whole. He's like, I don't wanna be in this dinner. Okay, so yeah, I'm just gonna pull out the big chunks that didn't work. This jar opener is my favorite. It's really simple design. There you go. Love this thing. I'll put a link to this in the description box below because seriously, it's one of the best jar openers. Okay, so this is a jar of marinara that I already had in the refrigerator from a previous night, but there's not that much in it, but I wanna use it up first so it doesn't go bad but you're gonna need anywhere between like three quarters and maybe one jar. We're just gonna, and then we're gonna, I'm just gonna pulse this up to mix it up. Okay, and then we're gonna clean and go to the next step. Okay, so you can see that it is a finely ground mixture. This is definitely a unique style of lasagna. I will give it that. So I'm gonna try to work the blade out here and then I'm gonna add a little bit more tomato sauce, but I just wanna stir it in instead of pulse the vegetables even further. I mean, this is a, obviously a vegetable lasagna, but like if you were gonna have a meat sauce, you know, this is the meaty part of the lasagna that we're gonna filling. And I always wanna overdo the vegetables. Like just now I saw an onion in there. I'm like, oh, I should have put an onion in here. I'm like, no. I mean, this is probably already too much, but I love it when I have leftover filling ingredients. You'll see on my channel, like I'll make, you know, dumplings or I always, raviolis. I love coming up with ways to use my extra filling. Okay. So now we're gonna make the cheesy creamy layer. So I know I get called out on this. I don't like ricotta. I like cottage cheese. So if you are a ricotta fan, please use ricotta for your, your lasagnas. I am just not a fan. I don't like it. So I grew up using cottage cheese in my Italian dishes like this. So that's what I'm going to use. So this is about half of this big 24 ounce container. I'm excited because I need to use this up. And then I'm going to crack in two eggs. So yes these are the kind of meals that i just love creating it's a little nerve-wracking <laughs> when you're doing it in front of the camera because i'm in my head a lot i'm like oh what am i gonna do next how do i do this but when you know methods of how to cook you can get really fun and you don't need a recipe so oh gosh i am so almost out of pepper okay so salt pepper and um some italian seasoning seasoning and then we're gonna add a whole bunch of just an Italian blend cheese, shredded cheese mix, okay? And of course you can grate in fresh cheese too. I will never ever complain about using fresh cheese. I've just taken the shortcut over the last couple of years and gone with the shredded cheeses. I try to stick with whole real ingredients as much as possible. I think the, like this is a full fat cottage cheese. I never cook with low fat ingredients. I figure 
the less processed that we can get, it's going to be the most healthy for us. I don't like processed foods. And then again, you know, I do take a shortcut. This has, you know, when you have these shredded cheeses, they do add, you know, preservatives. So take your shortcuts where you feel comfortable taking them. Okay, so, and I also have some Parmesan, but I'm gonna save that to the top. So now I have a whole lot of stuffing and a cheese mixture. Okay, now either take some butter or a spray and spray down. This, what brand, this is Pyrex, the 1.75 quart. Just find whatever size container that will fit down in your Instapot. And they actually sell specific ones that you can buy for the Instapot brand. This one just fits down in my eight quart, so I'm gonna use it. It's a dish I already own. You can use a metal, a glass, doesn't matter. And you know, it's family of four. This is gonna be plenty big for us. Okay, now we're gonna start with, oh, and then these are the oven ready lasagna noodles. So again, a little bit more processed, but we're gonna take the shortcut. Got two boxes of these, but I don't think I'll need two boxes. I'm going to put down, I'm trying to decide, do, do we think this is tomatoey enough? How tomatoey do we like our, I think we like it a little bit more tomatoey, don't we? Whoa, a lot more tomatoey. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be so delicious. And all of these yummy vegetables. Okay, put down a layer of our veggies, and then we're gonna fit rectangle lasagna noodles in a round bowl the best we can. Of course, by breaking them up and just kind of putting them in there as we can. Oh yes, one of the reasons why we do wanna go more on the tomato-y side is because these noodles do need liquid to cook. So a cheese layer, and then the good thing is being an Instapot, we will be steaming this dish because that's how the Instapot works. And so that'll bring extra moisture to these noodles. So kind of get them down in there the best we can. You don't want to layer these noodles on top of each other as much as possible because again, they need that moisture to be able to actually cook up. The eggs help bind everything together too. And noodles. All right, meat, or meat, haha, <laughs> veggie sauce. The cool thing is when you cook your, when you process your vegetables up this fine, a lot of kids who have texture problems with the vegetables won't mind it as much because they're so finely you know, processed up. Last layer here. This actually worked out really well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and try to make this one as pretty as possible because it's the top layer. We'll see how that works. Yeah, I did not need two boxes. I used about half of this box. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of this meat sauce on top because again, I keep calling it a meat sauce. It is such a vegetable sauce. Like it just kind of has a meaty texture to it, I guess. <laughs> put that and then now I'm going to top with my Parmesan cheese because at the end, after we cooked our lasagna, if you have the time and you put this under the broiler just for a few seconds to get that kind of brown color, that gives you that little extra wow factor. Now, if you're in a hurry, you can skip that step. That's just for presentation only. Okay, this step is important because otherwise it makes getting your dish out very hard at the end. So I have a really big piece of foil that I'm going to fold in half and fold in like just just enough to make it where it's strong enough to lift this out, okay? Because, oh, and they sell, they sell things that now 
silicone whatnots that you can use with your Instapot. I'm gonna make two of them actually. I'm gonna have one going both directions. But yeah, they sell the little lift out things, but I don't do pot and pot that often, so I haven't bought any kind of special thing that'll help me lift it out. You know, the couple times that I have done a pot and pot, I've just used this foil method. So, okay, the first thing we're gonna do is put our trivet in, and then you need at least one cup, but I'm gonna err on the side of caution, put it in closer to two or three. Carefully lower in our lasagna. You see there's plenty of space around the edges. And then I'm actually gonna pull this open because I don't want steam dripping down into my cheese. So. I'm going to use another piece of foil to cover the lasagna. And then we'll put our little handle lid in there. Put the lid on. Okay, and we're gonna set it to ceiling and then we're gonna pressure cook it for 18 minutes. Let's vent this and cross our fingers that this lasagna is not a fail. Oh, it smells good. Oh, one thing I did forget to do, which isn't a big deal. Next time, uh, make sure you spray the bottom of your tin foil so that your cheese doesn't stick to it. But that's okay. We're just gonna pull it off here. You can see my cheese kind of stuck to my foil. That's okay, that's okay. Oh, it looks so good. Got a little bit of moisture. There's a little bit of water right here that kind of slipped in, but overall looks like it got mostly good. Okay, I'm gonna preheat my oven to a broil and we're going to carefully lift this out. I didn't get on film, but hey, it, it, it didn't, uh, it did not spill. <laughs> okay, <laughs> maybe, maybe if I plan to do more pot and pots, I should get the silicone pull up things. It's all good. It kind of smushed in a little bit there cause my uh, mitt kind of went in, but we will. It's a make it work moment. It looks really pretty. See the, tri the trifle edges. I'm gonna just throw this on a little cookie sheet so it's easier to get in and out of the oven. And then I'm gonna throw it under the broiler for about, just depending on how long you have, you know, five minutes. The cool thing is other than, you know, maybe a quick rinse, which really doesn't even need that, my Instapot is still even clean. So, win-win. It's looking so pretty, guys. So, it was under the broiler for like four minutes or so, and then I've let it cool down. Probably should let it cool down even more, but again, I'm a busy mom too. I've gotta get my kids to Taekwondo. So, if I was able to let it cool down for like 15, 20 minutes, I would, because then it'll give it more of a chance to set up and give us a pretty presentation. But this is real life. This isn't like, you know, pretend. So we'll just see what we can do. All right. Oh, I hear a crunch from the crackle of the cheese on top. I love that when cheese gets hard like that. Oh my gosh. And you saw how much vegetables was in this. It is so, oh, okay pause before we get into the, like the tasty deliciousness of this. So I did end up having quite a bit left over. And so of course my brain was like, hmm, how can I let this go? I don't want to waste it. Have you ever heard of shakushka? I'll put it up here. Shashushka. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's uh, like an Egyptian or Northern uh, African. It, it's like from Israel, like that whole region. You take a tomato sauce and you 
poach eggs in the tomato sauce. So I'm going to like do a twist on that. And I'm gonna add even more tomato sauce to this and put some eggs and that is gonna be an amazing breakfast or lunch for me tomorrow. So <laughs> I'm already excited about that. I will post it to Instagram. Make sure you follow me on Instagram because I post crazy stuff like that all the time. Okay. Oh, hey, look. Look at that. Gorgeous. 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 Oh my gosh. Hello. Beautiful. Photogenic. Now the real test. Let's taste this. I'm so excited. This has been on my menu all week and I'm just super excited to try it. Mm-hmm. Mm. That is so good. Mm. Mm. Okay. <laughs> the vegetables are perfect. The cheese is creamy. Mm. Make this dish. Mm. So good. All right. So it's really, really fast. It's super clean up. I got, you know, this and one other bowl dirty. But yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, okay, Amanda, finish up the video. <laughs> you can come back to this and eat it in just a minute. I got to call my family down to eat too. They're like waiting upstairs. They're like, I'm hungry, mom. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button so that you can hear more videos from me. And until the next time, guys, <laughs> I'll see you later.